First of all, it was, um, it was a very positive um, experience to read this uh, chapter regarding the Croatian social security system, uh, because on the one hand, it was very uplifting to read about such an interesting topi topic from a fine expert in this field, because it's, it's absolutely clear from, from, the, from the chapter that uh, Professor Vinkovic is, uh, is, a, is a fine expert in this field. And on the other hand, I think social security, the right to social security, social benefits, and all these questions are, are a very good topic for, for such a conference. I mean, as scholars, professors, experts, everyone are talking about this topic and then coming to very good and very uh, very well sounding conclusions but sometimes it seems like nothing happens i mean it's um, it, it can be frustrating obviously but on the other hand also it can be very positive for the future of course for for the lawmakers for for other experts not only lawyers obviously for for anyone who is uh, who is invested in these in these systems? Not speaking of of course uh, every worker or or their families. So um, when when I started to read this chapter and started to evaluate or form some kind of opinion on this chapter, um, it, uh, the first thing that caught my eye was uh, Professor Vinkovic writes that uh, the so-called population aging trend uh, is, is one of the main problems in this field. I think, um, of course, not speaking on the behalf of any, everyone here, but I can, I can say that we are rowing in the same boat, I think because uh, in Central Eastern Europe, or I, I'd rather say in the European Union, it seems to be a very common, very uh, shared problem of the member states, all citizens, all lawmakers, all parliaments, everyone else, uh, because uh, it's, it, it seems like these population problems uh, cannot be solved um, in, the, in the short term, obviously. So um, the problems are clear, and we can read a lot uh, about the Croatia specific problems or challenges in this chapter and I think when it uh, comes to the the analysis of the Croatian system it's very interesting to read I I made two notes regarding the system the first one is that as professor Vinkovic wrote uh, the system is a mixed system between the uh, traditional beverage and the uh, Bismarck models and it's very interesting to see that some of the legal institutions, some of the pension cares, everything else, are based on these uh, traditional values and the traditional legal institutions that, for example, in Hungary we, we know well, let's say it, or we hope we know well. And uh, the other interesting thing about these, this system is that the Croatian social security system, at least according to my opinion, pays a lot of attention to, uh, to the social inclusion. Uh, it's a very uh, inclusive system. It's very determined to, to try to protect everyone who are, of course, who have those rights, like citizens, obviously. Uh, and, uh, and the social security, the, the, ter the, the determination for social security, uh, as, we, as we saw in the presentation, um, is written in the Constitution, of course, we, we see the fundamental right approach to that, and we can also read in the chapter some very interesting things about the human right side, the fundamental human rights side of this question as well. So the system uh, seems to be very, very uh, well structured, and of course it seems to be um, also based on the traditional and common values of the European countries, I can say maybe the Central European countries or, or the EU uh, at large, uh, to say the least. Of course, when we talk about the pay-as-you-go pension systems, um, which I think more of the experts here emphasized previously, uh, it's always problematic because on the one hand it's, it's kind of simple, it's kind of easy to understand why pay-as-you-go systems are very common or, or very well used. But on the other hand, we can see that uh, the sustainability of these systems, I think it's, it's, it's an illusion. Uh, it, it, it will become an illusion, I, I, I don't know, in speaking in 10 years or so, the same conference, same place or so, we will have uh, maybe bigger problems or, or the... the uh, the tone of the conference will be even more negative 
because as we are going towards these uh, population age, aging population and, and uh, societies are getting older and older, I, at the moment, I, I do not see the, the way out from, from this, from a, from a clear perspective. Okay, uh, on the other hand, we can talk about the positive outcomes, of course, based on the, on the chapter, because as I already said, the system is very inclusive, and uh, it was very interesting to read and uh, see in the presentation that the European Social Charter is, uh, has, has a very important role in the Croatian uh, social security system as well. And uh, it was also interesting to, to know, to come to the conclusion based on the chapter, that those rights, those values that the European Social Charter and of course uh, the, the European Union's legal system in the social policy is trying to represent is, uh, is very much uh, emphasized, is very powerful in the Croatian uh, legal system. But, and of course I have bad news here again, uh, that's, I, I think, um, if, we, if we take based the problems, the challenges we face, as I mentioned before, that, that only exists on paper. Let's say it. It is not very difficult to, to reach the compliance with the European Social Charter, to be very honest, because some laws, some functioning systems can be, uh, could be enough. But when it comes to the reality, when it comes to the everyday practice, or as a lot of experts mentioned before, when it comes to the sustainability, okay, uh, I think we can be very um, honest and simple here. When it comes to money, of course, um, it's, it's not that you know, uh, simple as it seems based on the charter, uh, despite the, the fancy declarations and everything else we see. Of course, without those fancy declarations, uh, there would be no, European values or traditions in, in uh, social security systems, but uh, maybe it's time to act, I guess. So um, it's a very big problem, of course, and uh, one last thing about it is that um, um, we, we can read a lot about the, not a lot because uh, the chapter cannot go into enough detail, obviously, because of the of the limitations of the, of the chapter itself, but we can read about the pension system and the pension system bears almost all the problems we mentioned before. And of course, uh, the healthcare system, as we heard the, the healthcare, tourism and, and uh, such things. Yeah, I, can, I think uh, Croatia is, is so beautiful that uh, here's an operation, here's the beach, so yeah. Um, okay, so... Um, uh, as a concluding note, um, again, I, I have bad news and good news. Good news uh, bad news is that um, black clouds are gathering over, over the social security systems. It's very clear. We saw the problems from the previous presentations, and of course, we can read it in this chapter as well. And uh, something needs to be done. May maybe the lawmakers, maybe not only the lawmakers, uh, have the responsibilities, but something needs to be done. Good news is that there is always silver lining, of course, uh, through uh, shining through the black clouds. And we can say that if we pay enough attention to these values we mentioned before, the human rights approach, the fundamental rights approach, and of course, maybe somehow the labor markets can be more competitive in this sense, or, or maybe the labor markets, some, some reforms are needed in the labor markets, and those reforms will, will go through sometimes. For example, in Croatia and, of course, in other European countries, uh, maybe the situation uh, will get better in the, in the near or in the not-too-distant future. Thank you very much for your